down the middle here. Good afternoon, everybody. We got another 50 time perfect test history recognition is Real Adesanya. Um, as I do these, I like to tell a little personal story about each athlete and Izzy's got, I think, two real good ones. The first is he is the first athlete to achieve 50 perfect test history coming into the UFC while the program was already in existence. He got to the UFC in 2018, all right? So in four years, 50, I think he's at 52 tests now. That's an average about a test a month. That's a lot of tests. Secondly, the reason that we do this when we first started planning this was for the benefit of the athlete. And to be honest with you, we weren't sure about what type of reception we'd get. Are they going to care about this or not? And I'd say overwhelmingly, the response has been very positive. They, they seek these things. So Izzy's last title defense in Houston in February, he wins, defends the belt. He's walking out of the arena. Uh, USADA was doing some post-fight testing, so I was kind of camped outside the medical tent. So I gave him the fist bump on the way by, he takes two steps by me, U turns around, says, Jeff, where am I from my uh, 50 test jacket? I'm like, Iz, you haven't even gotten in the medical tent yet, just defended the belt. I think that's, a, that's an example of, of these guys and girls relishing this because it's not often that they get the chance to talk about really the effort that it takes to be clean under this program. Every day of those four years, he's let USADA know where he can be located. You know, that's a task in and of itself. The busy life that this guy has traveling all over the world. And I don't think you've ever missed a test. So uh, very honored, Don and I here, to present Israel Adesanya. I've never hidden anywhere, by the way. Never hidden anywhere. Always show my, my whereabouts. Shout out to Paradigm for always updating me because I forget and they get it done. So thank you to Paradigm for always updating my whereabouts. But like I said, you'll never find me under the cage. I'm always in there fighting. Pleasure to work with you, my man. Congratulations. And uh, she's going to put your jacket on here. Take a little picture here. Yep. Israel, you, uh, it just seems that the, the, the intensity, the confidence that you have right now is maybe at an all-time high. I mean, uh, what, what is it for that? You know, where's that energy coming from? Um, from me. It's how I live. It's my lifestyle. And honestly, before this camp, Eugene told me the last camp was a good camp. He really enjoyed um, the work I put in. And he asked me, how are you going to make this one better? And he just planted that seed before the camp. And yeah, I felt like I exceeded those expectations. Um, wasn't never late once, never missed a session, was always on time. And I felt, uh, yeah, I felt like I, I killed at this camp. So I can't wait to display skills. You know, you, you saw Jared coming as a contender, it seems like, earlier maybe than most people did. It seems like you, you saw him coming. So what was it that you saw in him that you identified early that I'm going to be facing this guy? His spirit, if I'm being honest. His fighting spirit and his essence. And I recognize that because I'm an empath myself, so I can kind of feel the energy from a great, great man and a great fighter. But yeah, I like to take care of these guys. Like, I, you know me, I call out all the greats. And I saw that in him early on before all you guys did. And I try to boost him up. He fell short once and then came back and yeah, proved his worth as the, the next contender. I know you feel confident in yourself, of course, but does he pose a danger for you? I mean, when you look at the guy, is he a danger, a threat to you? I don't feel so. I don't feel so. I feel like he poses a danger the same way um, all my past opponents pose, you know, dangerous threats. But they keep talking about power, power, power. What is it? You ever heard that before when someone fights me? Oh, there's power, power this, power that. It's the same old song, you know? Fucking get it off repeat. Get me a new song. I'm just glad I have a new blood to fight in this fight. So, yeah, it's time to eat. 
We know that Alex Pereira isn't on this card by accident. I'm just curious what you think about him being a like, is it exciting because it could set up the story for you guys, or do you feel like he's kind of maybe riding the coattails a little bit and doesn't deserve it just yet? A uh, little bit of both. Coattails because, you know, I mean, the guy supposedly beat me in kickboxing, and he's still trying to chase me because I'm the one winning in life. And I like that story, like you said. It's the story we're telling ourselves. The, the arc in this story is going to be beautiful if he gets past Sean Strickland. Um, they say, you know, I said Jerry, you know, light heavyweight champ, three fights in the UFC, but an extensive record in MMA. This guy's only had like, I mean, four, five fights, something crazy. So, you know what they're doing, but I like this because I get to take him out early before he's going to get good, but not right now. Nice. Last thing for me, you seem to be kind of a master of like creating iconic moments. Uh, I guess what, what's, what's your goal here? What's your goal here? This is big, bro. This is like, for me, this feels like, you know, Fuck, I don't know, Super Bowl, WrestleMania, like that type of big. So, yeah, uh, I'm just going to show off and show out. That's what I do. He's right over here. To your right. You mentioned, hey, Oscar. Oh, man, how you doing? Um, obviously, you got in the co-main event, Alex Volkanovsky. I know that's something that you're very proud of and something that you've wanted for a while. Do you feel like this is overdue to book you on the same card? Or because this is International Fight Week, it actually has culminated in the perfect way? I feel like it's perfect. It's It's just... Synergy, destiny, whatever you want to call it. It's, it's happening the way it's supposed to happen in this timeline. Um, and, yeah, what a way to cap it off. Me and Alex closing out the show in spectacular fashion. Uh, this, even at the house, man, we're, the, the vibe is just unmatched. Literally, everyone that pulls up and just says, like, man, you guys' energy is different. You look on uh, my freestyle bender, my first, uh, freestyle bender page or Alex Volkanovsky's YouTube page, you see the... The content we're dropping, the challenges we're having. Our team is just, we're just cool. Like, we're a cool family. And I feel like the energy right now is just, you can't, it can't be fucked with. Yeah. You mentioned about putting on a show, which you obviously like to do. Do you think by the time we get to Sunday, this event will be remembered as one of the great international fight weeks, like UFC 189 and something like that? Facts. I feel so. I feel like this is one of those ones that are going to be memorable. Because I like to make things memorable. You know how I do. I put this on myself so that way I know like I said pressure makes diamonds and when you put that pressure on me when I put that pressure on myself I will shine like a diamond All right, last thing for me obviously you just received the USADA jacket I'm, it clearly means a lot to you I'm sure it, what does it Ooh. feel like to get that on stage I mean today? when you're great you know they talk about titty gate so at the same time I'm like how the fuck you know, they just need to find excuses to you know take away my greatness and I understand this is what people are supposed to do so I let him. And then, look, I will give $3 million to anyone who could ever have concrete evidence that I even know what the fuck I'm doing with steroids or how to take steroids. I promise you, wallahi, $3 million if you can find anyone who has concrete evidence that I've ever even purchased, touched, or done any kind of performance-enhancing drugs or whatever. I watched, what's that, um, Icarus. Is it Icarus? The doc- That's how much I know about steroids from that documentary. It, it, sh- it opened my eyes. It shocked me. So, yeah, $3 million for anyone who can ever find any concrete evidence that I've been using performance-enhancing drugs. Pull up. This is easy. You can, it's easy to talk, talk and type online, but really, it just it got to me a little bit after the Costa fight because I was like, these fucking cunts are just trying to take away my greatness because I had a fucking spectacular performance. And I'm like, how the fuck are you going to try and take that away with a- accusations based on nothing? So I'm like, yeah, pull up. Show me what's up. $3 million. I know you don't have that in the bank. I do. What's up, Chris Reeves? I see you out there. Since you called me out, I might as well ask you a question, eh? Yeah, let's go. <laughs> What's different about Jared Cannon here? Why is this a different challenge for you? It's new blood, and I feel like a vampire right now. I'm dark, and my people around me know. Like, uh, They just know how it is when it comes to this, this part of the camp, like the fight week and you know, the timeline that we're in right now. So, yeah, um, new blood. That's what I'm going to say. I like having new blood. The last two of just being like the Victoria one, I got bored. The Robert one, I was waiting a little bit, and I just didn't like that for my performance. So I like having new blood, and I like having to rise to the occasion. That's the difference between me and him. I'm used to the spotlight. I'm used to all this shit. He's not. He's, he's new to it. I feel like he's man enough and mature enough to handle it, but not like me. Outside of the new blood, though, does he pose anything to you that uh, you haven't seen before? Nah, don't think so. I'm being dead serious, honest. I don't feel so. I feel like, not that 
if I can if if, if, I, if I'm being silly and I get caught slipping, that's on me. If it's meant to be, it's all up to me. But there's nothing he does that I've never seen before. Not even in the grappling. I don't feel so. Israel, right here? Yeah. To the, to the left. Um, Sean Strickland and Alex Pereira are obviously fighting. If Strickland wins that fight, would you welcome a fight with him? Or yeah. is it just a... You, you would. Okay, I, I was like just curious Strickland, about that man. because... Yeah. He's, like, he's like the little stepbrother I never wanted. He's a weird, like, respect. I respect the guy because he just speaks his mind. I speak my mind too, but he speaks his mind regardless of the repercussions. We're under the same paradigm, you know, management team. And, um, yeah, I'm sure... Sometimes they have a headache with some of the stuff he puts out. But I respect the fact that he speaks his, his truth, whether I like it or not. He's, you know, freedom of speech in the right and the great off USNA. Um, yeah, so I respect that. But, yeah, he's like the little stepbrother I never wanted. And I saw him last night. He knows what's up. We looked at, you know, we know. He and me knows, yeah. Are you surprised he's a betting underdog against Pereira with how much more experience he has in MMA? Hmm, underdog. Uh, I, didn't, I didn't even know that. But uh, am I surprised? Uh, the odd makers do what the odd makers do. I don't. Even, same way I ask you guys who makes the pound for pound rankings and all that shit. All the other, you know, like no, I never got a straight answer. But also same thing. Who makes these odds? What have they done? What do they know? What's their credentials? So they can um, put the odds at whatever they want. Um, I think. Fuck. Honestly, if I'm being honest, he might get fucked up, Strickland. If he's not, if he doesn't fight with his ego, he'll get fucked up. Just last one for me. Jared talked uh, during this media day about meeting you for the first time a few years ago. Do you remember that uh, exchange that you guys had uh, a few Might years ago? Might have been back? in New York. Was it in New York? Yeah. I remember he was a few rows behind me. I saw him and I said, what's up? And I expressed my interest to fight him back then. Um, yeah. So I, I remember it and I, I'm a man of my word and here we are. Like I said, I've always, um, not in the shit sense, but I've always picked my opponents. Because everyone, excuse me, well, every time. I, um, yeah, people pick and choose the opponents on the way up to the UFC because they want to pad their records. When I'm in the UFC, I pick and choose my opponents because I want to pad my records with legit contenders. So I picked and choose them from a while back. And, like, I'm, I'm glad he didn't fumble this time and he, he made it to the dance. So, yeah, here we are. And let's go. Hi, Izzy, over right here, here to your left. He's been waiting. Hold up. Yeah, you go, you go. Um, you mentioned new blood, and I actually saw Luke Rockhold the other day in California. He said he thinks he's the only one who can beat you at this weight. Um, if he can beat Paulo Costa, is that a fight that could potentially intrigue you? Mm, Costa depends how he beats him. Uh, but, yeah, he's, I mean, he's getting on, so I'd like to get that under my belt as well. But um, that's... Uh, Who's he fought? When, when is the last time he fought? You can't just fight Against Costa. Young. Oh, nah, you know. You got to do some more. Show me something. Show me something. Like I said, depends on how he beats Costa. You know? Um, all these they all, everyone wants this. That's not even mine. I, have, <laughs> I don't know. They got it from the fucking thing. I don't know where mine is right now. I literally don't know. Like I said, I don't care. But this thing gets a lot of attention. And it looks good on my black skin, so that's why I like to wear it. And it brings in more money, more checks, all that. But... Nah, I just want to kill all these guys, all these names. And, yeah, Rock Hall is definitely one of those names that can be on that list. Are you glad to see that all these guys are booked right now? We have some massive middleweight fights coming up, obviously, Saturday, and then the weeks beyond that, too. I haven't checked. I don't really, I don't really follow it that well. I, I, you see and you forget because there's so many fights. So I mean, we're blessed to be part of the UFC to be with this organization because – Spoiled with fights, fights, fights. Might have a month break or maybe a week break and then fights, 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 fights. So we're spoiled. Um, it's hard to keep up with what fights are coming up. But, um, yeah, it's just nice to be up here chilling in the air. When you're getting introduced now, they say, you know, undefeated at middleweight. I don't like it. I feel I like it's ask. stupid. Uh, yeah, I had a loss to Jan, big whoop. It doesn't. This isn't boxing where it's like, oh, there was one before the uh, Haney Cambosas fight. Someone said, uh, if, you know, who, this could be a turning point for their career. If, you know, if they lose, oh, that's, that's it. So they write them off like it's nothing. Bro, Canelo just lost twice. He's still a fucking big superstar. Connor's lost a few times. He's still a fucking big superstar. That's why I said losses don't mean shit. You, if you use them wise, you learn from them. So, yeah, I don't like when they start saying undefeated at middleweight. I don't know why they made that such a thing. It's cool. I don't mind it, but I just don't, eh, I don't need it. 
Is that what's going into you talking this week about, you know, I want to do something spectacular. The belt doesn't mean as much. I'm bigger than the belt almost. Do you feel like you are at this point bigger than a UFC title? Uh, I am. I've, before I came in the UFC, you can go back on the interviews. You guys were there filming me, and I'm saying, I'm the fucking champ. I'm going to show you guys. That was me. Um, so that hasn't changed. This just looks nice on me. That's all I said. But, yeah, uh, bigger than the belt, I don't need the belt. Put it that way. Like, I'm, I'm the guy. I'm the guy right now that everyone wants to fight. So I've got the target on my back. And <laughs> for some of these guys, I'm even bigger than a title fight. And last question for me. Uh, last time you were on the stage for one of the pre-fight media days, uh, you were talking a lot about your new contract and how significant that was and how you felt like it was kind of going to be a you know, page turner for the sport as a whole mm. and you helping younger fighters. Can you just elaborate on what that means and do you feel like you've made any progress in doing that in the months since? It takes time. Um, you know, with Francis um, and also you have to look at it this way. Fighters are like strippers. We're independent contractors. So um, everyone's out for themselves. But then there comes a point we need to come together as fighters in the UFC and also make an agreement like what can we do to help the baseline for the younger guys or the guys who just got into the UFC. So because I feel like, honestly, this is a prestigious position to be a UFC fighter. It can't just be like, I don't know if this is, I don't live in America, like if it's the same with the NBA or NFL, like the drafts, it's a big deal, right? I feel like that's how the UFC is. You make it to the UFC, it's a fucking big deal. So we need to get paid like it's a fucking big deal. I'm getting paid. A few of us are getting paid. But I'm talking about the guys who just get into the UFC. Um, I think Patty just got his contract boosted up, but he's a superstar in his own right. He, he made his way. And also these guys, you can't just expect to get paid and not do anything. You need to show off. You need, and I don't mean show off as in like what you guys think show off is. I mean show off your essence Show off who you are. Set yourself apart from the rest. That's how you make the money. But like I said as well, um, it takes time. It takes time. Rome wasn't built in a day, so we're still working. Hi, Izzy, over here, uh, over here to your left. Uh, Thank you. Talking to Submission Radio, Jared Cannonier compared you to Doctor Strange. He gives huh. you control of uh, time and space. Huh. Based on his skills... Like, what comic book character would you compare Jared to? Ooh, I like that. Doctor Strange. I just saw the movie as well not long ago. Doctor Strange. That's a good one. Um, hmm. Jared. I was literally, first thing that came to my head, Beast from X-Men. That's the first thing that came to my head. Beast from X-Men. Yeah. Uh, just over here. Same, same place. Hands up, please. I, can, I like to look to at people. Left. There we go. The um, I asked Alex Pajaya, you know, how he thought a fight with you would go, obviously, you know, your past two fights were in kickboxing, this is MMA. Uh, he said, you know, imagine what I could do with four-ounce gloves. What's your response to that? Imagine what I can do with four-ounce gloves. I did the same thing to him in the second fight. I, I don't know if you guys have listened to the, who's actually seen the whole fight? Hands up. That's one, two, three people, four, five, in a room full of how many? Exactly. You're journalists. Do your fucking job. I fucked this guy up in the first fight. Not crazy, but the judges gave it to him. Second fight, I had him on skates, and I made a judgment call, an error in my part. And it was a beautiful story for him because in his backyard, down two rounds, on the third round, he comes and knocks me out. That's a beautiful story for him. Go back to UFC 92, Vanilla Silver versus Rampage Jackson. That's a clear example of how I see this going the third time. He who laughs last, laughs best. And I'm going to have the last laugh. Do you believe he deserves to be in the position that he is now? Do you Deserving like is subjective. Deserve. Everyone deserves this. Earned. Did you earn the position? That's the that's what Everyone says deserve, deserve. Did you earn it? People say, I don't deserve this shit. They say, oh, he doesn't deserve this. He doesn't deserve to have all these money, all this accolades and whatnot. I'm like, fuck you. I earned this shit. Earn, I don't think he's earned it, to be honest. He, you know, I like it, though. I like the tailored-made matchups because it makes a bigger story. And guess what? A bigger, bigger paycheck for myself when we fight. So, yeah. Um, deserve? Nah. I don't know. Earned? Definitely not. But he's here, and I like it, and I want it. And in terms of, you know, big fights for you, you obviously went up to... Uh, don't talk about 205. I've already said. <laughs> yeah. You guys do your job. I've said this all week. I'm focused on 185, running my division right now. That's all I'm focused on. Okay, thank you. No worries. Israel, back here. Hands up, please. Thank you. Uh, 
when you're out there and you're putting on performances, let's be honest, you've had a very strong schedule of opponents. When you're out there and you go back to the gym, you talk with Eugene, what kind of things are you critical about when you watch your fights back? Uh, my last one, like I said, I waited a bit. I, was, uh, I, I waited a bit, and that's me being honest. Because um, the first round, I fucked him up. I was on. I was in the zone. And then um, second round, I still did work, but then, like, from the end of the second round, third round, I kind of like just, I, I'm, I was waiting for the same mistake a little bit, but I, I created that mistake, so I should have created it again. And that's me being honest with myself and my assessment. And me and Eugene have our talks about it as well. We know what to do. But, um, yeah, uh, the guy thought he won the fight based on me coasting. Are you kidding? So it just shows where I'm at. Like, one leg kick and, oh, my God, he lost that round, you know. Maybe he might have pushed me down. Oh, my God, Rob did something. It's, you know, it's bigger than it is. I'm, I'm where Silva was at a few years ago when he was at the top of his game. There was a few fights, like UFC 97. I think after UFC 97, that was Talos Latest. People were talking shit. And then he was like, oh, really? Bet. And then, like I said, UFC 101 did some work. I did the same thing after UFC 246. People were talking shit. I was like, oh, really? Bet. UFC 253. I fucked them up. Again, after this last fight, just because it didn't end the way the first fight did, people were, oh, this and that, rah, 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 rah. And I take on some of that just because I like to let's see what the streets are saying. But the streets don't know how to fight. The streets don't know shit about MMA. My team does. So I listen to my team. And like I said, the criticism I got from them and me being um, – self-critical of my performance i know what i have to do in this fight that's why i said fuck wins fuck losses fuck the belt i'm here to have fun uh, my final question what are you most proud of in your skills in terms of your growth as a martial artist because you obviously came in with a lot of talent from kickboxing but you've gotten even better what are you most proud of when you think about the work you've put in and what you're now able to accomplish inside the cage my grappling that's the, that's the thing I'm the most proud of, uh, the fact that I'm a great grappler in this, in this game, and people can't even see that. So, yeah, I'm really proud of that. And also, my breath work. I've been working with Dave Wood for a while now, and I'm really impressed with the way I can control my mind with my breath. It's, it's crazy. Once you, once you take the red pill on breathing, you can't go back. It's, it's, it's almost impossible to go back because you know, what is it? Know the way you see it in all things. So, yeah, I see everything. Any more? Cool. Thank you. And I mean that. Three million. Three fucking million dollars. Let's go.